the following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. You know, I was just thinking about something. Uh, there's no reason why we both have to go see Josh Layton's widow. Now, listen, Big Shorty. You ain't about to saddle me off seeing some poor widow woman all by myself. Me being there's not going to help her any. Yeah, but it's going to help me. Now you're going, and that's it. Why? Well, because Mr. Layton was one of Paul's best friends, and we're supposed to be here doing everything we can to help. Besides, Paul, Paul told me to keep an eye on you anyhow. I told you to keep an eye on me. What in the heck for? To keep you from getting chased all the way back to the Ponderosa by some hopping mad daddy with a shotgun in his hand. And the look in your eye, that's just about what's going to happen. Ah, horse, come on. Joe, you ain't about to take off with that pretty little filly I seen you making eyes with down the lobby a while ago. You're going with me, and that's final. Ladies, you'll... I'm sorry, you'll have to wait just a minute. Now, Hoshi, you, you soak yourself real good now until the porter brings you something to wear. Oh, and, and ladies? Ladies, I want to thank you very much for your patience. You wait right here, ladies, and he'll be out in a minute. Joe! I'm gonna whip you for sure! Daggummit. Get out of here. I can't pay any bills. Get out and leave me alone. Ma'am, I ain't no bill collector. I, I, I was sent here to help Mrs. Layton. Who are you? Horse Cartwright. Cartwright? <gasps> Ma'am, what's the matter? Can I get you anything? A glass of water? My smelling salts, they're, they're in there. sure didn't mean to upset you like that. Oh, forgive me. It's just that I... I was so touched that, that you came all this way for me. You Miss Layton? Yes. I wonder if you have a handkerchief. Why are you looking at me like that? Oh, I, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to stare. I just had it in my head. I reckon that he was going to be a little... 
different. Until a minute ago, I, I was half dead. Don't you worry, ma'am. I'm, I'm here to fix everything up. It's no wonder you're feeling so poorly. Empty house like this would give anybody the crawly skin. I, I had to sell the furniture. Ma'am, that's, that's water all under the bridge now. Now, you go get yourself dressed. Dressed? Well, sure. I ain't gonna eat by myself. Besides, you you got to show me where a good place is. I, I ain't too familiar with Sacramento. Now, get it. Mr. Cartwright, I, I can't tell you how happy you've made me by asking me out to supper this evening. Pretty gal like you. Or not to have to think about nothing but living every minute, every day. I'm gonna shake up that attorney of yours and see what's hanging up that will. Oh, it, it really isn't his fault. Josh had a lot of bills and all the creditors have filed against the estate. That's what's taking so much time. Mr. Cartwright, would you come in for a moment, please? I just can't get the back of this dress hooked by myself. Would you mind? you can't do the job, we'll get somebody that can. Uh, how long has it been since I've heard a strong voice like that? You Cartwrights are magnificent. That's the only word for you. Oh, ma'am, there, there's not anything special about us. We, fact is, we're probably about the honorest bunch you ever run into. You can ask anybody in Virginia City about that. And what would they say? Well, well for one thing, they'd... They'd tell you that Horse Cartwright was about the meanest and hungriest man this side of St. Joe. And he got meaner the hungrier he got. Why, Mr. Cartwright, whatever's the matter? I, I don't know, ma'am. Maybe it's a, a perfume? Oh, uh, I was in hopes you'd like it. Oh, I, I do. What I meant to say was... Well, <laughs> oh, there, it's all done. That wasn't so hard now, was it? No, ma'am. <laughs> well, you poor man, you must be starved. Why don't we go get some supper? Good evening, Mrs. Layton. It is so pleasant to see you again. Oh, thank you. It's good to be able to be out among people again. Uh, your favorite table in the game room? Uh, the new roulette wheel has arrived. Oh, really? I must see it. Yeah. You feeling poorly again? Oh, no. No, I'm fine. Jean. Hmm. It was uh, sweet of you to remember the table I had the last time I was here, but I wonder if we couldn't have something a little more private. Of course, madame. Uh, right here. Very best vintage, 1854. This champagne was brought all the way from France, sir. I'm sure you will find it to your custom taste. Mrs. Layton can vouch for the year. It's excellent. Anything you say. What's the matter? Nothing. I... Ma'am, I'm... I'm just a cowboy. I... I don't reckon I fit into a place like this very good. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to make you unhappy. Oh, no, ma'am. You, you didn't. 
It takes some doing to make a man unhappy when he's when he's with you. See if you like it. Oh. It's real good. Ma'am, here's to a, to a whole lot more happiness than you've known the last couple of months, ma'am. Well, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. I, I know I'll have it now. Dang, I don't think that, that vinegar's gonna make me sneeze. It does tickle your nose, doesn't it? You think you can go on avoiding me? I came by to see you this afternoon. I was busy, Mr. Hammond. I'll bet you were. But I won't stand for any more of it. I want that ring back. Let go of me! Not till I get the ring. That's just about it, Buster. Now you done it. <laughs> we'll take care of him. I don't know what's the matter with that man. Ma'am, you're a lady. And a lady ain't got to explain no mean mouth drunk. He was a friend of my husband's. Ever since Josh died, he's given me trouble. He actually has some ridiculous idea that, that this ring Josh left me belongs to him. Don't you pay no mind to that. Mr. Cartwright, please take me home. Everybody's staring at us. Yes, ma'am. I guess I really messed things up for you, didn't I? Oh, it wasn't your fault. He hit you first. Yeah. Didn't hurt none. I ain't got the manners of a dang goat. Mr. Cartwright, we're gonna sit down and enjoy ourselves. And don't you worry any about your manners. You stood up for me, for my honor. You have no idea how that makes me feel inside, to know that someone cares. You're not only a gentleman, Mr. Cartwright, you're... You're wonderful. Now, let's sit down. I had no idea how late it was, ma'am. All that good food and... Champagne. I, I reckon I ought to apologize to you for keeping you out so late. Please don't, Mr. Cartwright. Can't we just just sit out here for a minute longer? Yes, ma'am. If, if you like. Do you think I? Do you think I was wrong? About what, ma'am? Because I... I was so happy with you tonight. Because for a moment, I, I was able to forget. Am I supposed to shrivel up and die just because my husband is dead? No, ma'am, no. I, I don't think that'd be his wish at all. Mr. Cartwright, I... I just can't go back into that empty house. It's like a tomb. And I'm still alive. I can't go back. I, I can't go back. Ma'am, if, if you could just manage it one more night. Well, what I mean to say is I'll figure out some way to get you out of there. But what could you do? Uh, I'll think of something, I promise. Crack corn and I don't care. Give me crack corn and I don't care. Most men's gone away. Doo dee doo dee. 
Doobly doo. You have a good time tonight, Joe? Hmm? Huh? That you, Hoss? Yeah, I ask you. You have a good time tonight? No. No, I came right back after I left. Been a lot better off I'd have gone see that old widow woman with you. Don't make no difference. I didn't need you at all. You feeling all right? Yeah, I... I ain't never felt better. You're talking kind of funny. What'd you do tonight? What the supper, Mrs. Layton. Yeah, what'd she like? Nothing like we thought. Uh, even worse, huh? No, no, no. She's just different. Have you been drinking? Yeah, a little champagne. Champagne? 1854 was a good year. 1854 is a good year for what? Hey, Joe, you ain't gonna sleep in your boots, are you? What's the matter? Didn't, didn't you have no fun? Oh, yeah, I had a great time. Until that gal I met disappeared and took my money pouch with her. Sorry to hear that. You're sorry to hear that? How come you're being so doggone charitable? I, I figured you'd pound me when you got back here. Pound you? What? What I want to pound you for? I ain't mad at you. Lady Joe, she's a real lady. Joe, I know what we're going to do. I done made up my mind. We're going to take Miss Layton back to Ponderosa with us. Oh, now, Hoss, come on. Look, I know how soft-hearted you are, but Pa sent us here to help her, not, not to adopt her and bring her back home with us. Joe, I, I can't just leave her here. Yeah, well, you can't take her with us. Look, you got to think about it. We got a long trip ahead of us. We got, we got two days by stagecoach just to get to Summit. Then we take the buckboard. It's another day through the pass. Now, what kind of a trip is that for an old lady to make? I sort of think maybe she'll be able to stand up under it. Yeah, well, I don't think so. I think it's one of the nuttiest ideas I ever heard of. Well, don't make any decision that's left you matter. We're gonna, we're gonna have lunch together tomorrow at noon. I done made reservations with the garçon. <laughs> Where is she? Well, she'll be here after a while. She's probably out shopping or something. Pretty fancy chug wagon, ain't it? Yeah, it's not bad. Not bad at all. What's the matter, Joe? Take a look at the girl over by the door. Women like that just don't run around loose. Hey, Hoss, loan me 20 bucks, eh? Hey, for a second, I better make it 50. Huh? Oh, look, I, I can't impress her if I'm broke. Come on. Hey, look, look, she's smiling at me. Give me the money. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Joe, before you, before you run off with that other gal, I, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Layton. Ma'am, this is Joe Cartwright. How do you do? Very nice meeting you, man. She's ever seen any country like this before. I guess not. Otherwise, she wouldn't have brought all this stuff along. Well, for somebody on the verge of poverty, she sure had a lot of clothes. Not to mention all those rings on her fingers. Oh. Lady's got to have clothes, Joe. Besides, you wouldn't even expect her to sell the stuff her husband gave her, would you? Well, if I was hungry, I'd sell them. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. Is it all right if I woke up and take a look at the lake? Oh, sure, ma'am, but be kind of careful. Those, those trails can get tricky at night. Don't you worry. I'll be careful.
Well, it's my turn to fix chow tonight. Why don't you, uh, don't you come take a look at the lake? Supper's gonna be ready in a minute, Miss Layton. Does the Ponderosa look like this? Oh, Ma'am, this, this is a Ponderosa. It is? Sure. We, we've been riding through it for the last couple of days, ever since we left the stagecoach. Oh! Why, it's unbelievable that, that anybody could actually own all this. Well, ma'am, it, it ain't exactly owning. I reckon the Ponderosa holds about as much claim to us as we do her. It's more like a partnership. Like we're all sort of beholden to one another. What I mean to say is that Paul won't let us cut a tree down unless there's a, another tree growing to take its place or, or take a cup of water out of the lake if, if it makes a lake go down that much. Ponderosa's got a, got a mighty lot to give. Like Paul says, we ain't to take one ounce out of her that she can't grow back. All my life, I, I never had enough of anything. My father was a drunkard and we were trash poor. When I married Josh, I thought that was all over with. Now I, right back where I started. Maybe I, I don't really understand what it means to have enough. But I do know one thing. What's that, ma'am? If anybody could have enough, it, it would be the Cartwrights. You, you're kings and the Ponderosa's your empire. What chances are commoner to become a Cartwright. Might not be as hard as you think to become a Cartwright. Even for somebody like me? Especially for somebody like you. Why haven't you kissed me? Ma'am, I... Right now, I figured if I ever put my arms around you, you'd you'd break up what, like one of them little China dolls. Well, let's just try and see if I do. What's the matter? Joe, me and Helen, we're going to get married. She's going to marry me. Me, Horse Cartwright. You're, you're joking. No, I ain't. We're going to get married. Oh, no. <laughs> congratulations. Hey, congratulations, <laughs> both of you. Jeez, I can't wait to see the look on Pa's face. <laughs> ain't it wonderful, Paul? Well, yes, yes, it's... Uh, 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 tell me, tell me about it at all. Not so, so sudden. <laughs> I'd like to speak to your father alone for a moment. Come on, Oz. Let him get acquainted. I'll get your stuff. You don't approve of this, do you, Mr. Cartwright? Well, Mrs. Layton, I haven't said anything. I'd been led to believe that you'd be quite a different sort of man. I... I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. What do you want me to do? Pretend that I'm mourning over the death of my husband? Mrs. Layton, I wouldn't want you to pretend anything. I just assume that... And I assume that you and I could be honest with each other. Honest? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. I'm talking about what you and I both know. About what Adam told you when he returned from the funeral. Well, Adam told me about Josh's death... Nothing more. 
You mean he... he didn't tell you the circumstances? What circumstances? Is there something more that he should have told me? Oh, of course. Adam would want to spare your feelings. Oh, Mr. Cartwright, I... I've been very rude. Mrs. Layton, tell me what it is you think I should know. When Josh died, he... he wasn't the man you knew. Or the man I married. There's no other way to say it. Josh was a drunk. He drank himself to death. I find that almost impossible to believe. So did I. Until the debt started piling up. Till I started selling the furniture out from under us. Till I, I realized I was married to a madman. Adam should have told me. Now you realize why these past few months of mourning have been a mockery. Living alone in that empty mansion. Keeping myself locked off from the world. And then Haas came along. He was so sweet. So understanding. For the first time in months, I, I felt like a woman again. I fell in love with him, Mr. Cartwright. I couldn't help myself. I wanted to be with him. I, I wanted to make him as happy as he had made me. And uh, it's all over now. Oh, Mrs. Le Helen, I, uh, you misunderstood. I, yes, I, I had reservations, but I, I, I didn't know. All I want for Haas is the happiness that you want for him. You don't hate me? Hate you? When I've been waiting all these years for a daughter-in-law? Oh, uh, I didn't know you were going to get this acquainted. <laughs> uh, after all, Hoss, you know the way pies with the ladies. I guess this means that you're going to give us your blessing, Paul. Hoss, when Adam gets back, we're going to put on the biggest wedding Nevada's ever seen. <laughs> I don't know whether you ought to go in here or not. What could happen to me? I'm with you, aren't I? Besides, it's so hot out there. Just dying for a cold lemonade. All right. Three, ten, eighteen, I bet. Is this a gambling place? Yeah, sure it is. It's, they run one of the biggest poker games in the whole Comstock in here. Really? How exciting. And what's this? This is one of them newfangled contraptions you play with silver money. It's just like gambling, only you play with a machine instead of a dealer. Do you think I could play it? Oh, sure you can, wouldn't you? Be careful your fingers don't stick to that crank, though. Some folks just can't turn it loose. <laughs> oh, that's hard to believe, isn't it? I wonder what they'll pick off next. Hey, oh. hey, you, you won the first time. Oh, Hoss, I, I really won. How exciting. Oh, I wonder if I could have that lemonade now. Yeah, I'll get it. Howdy, Haas. What'll it be? Uh, give me a, give me a couple of lemonades, Charlie. Lemonade? Did you say lemonade? One for the, one for the little lady over there, and one for me. Little lady seems to have changed you already. Ain't she cute? I don't reckon she ever seen one of them before. Wish I'd never seen it. Took $20 off me last week. Oh, Haas, darling, I, I'm having so much fun. I, I wonder if you could give me a little more money. Oh, honey, you just won over there. You, you already spent that? Oh, but I just know I'm going to make it pay off again. I just know it. Yeah. Oh, thank you, darling. Two lemonades, Haas. On the house. Thank you, Charlie. Sort of a hungry beggar, ain't it? Oh, darn. 
I was so sure I was going to win again. I don't guess Charlie's had much experience making lemonade. Ah, oh, sis. Is there something you could do alone for about an hour or so? Yeah, I gotta talk to a couple of people about the wedding arrangements. But what are you gonna be doing? Silly, I, I'm going to finish my shopping. Well, I'll go with you and talk to them later. Hoss, oh, you know, there are uh, some stores where ladies shop alone. Yeah, I don't reckon I thought about that. Well, you go ahead. <laughs> All right, darling. Oh, Hoss, I, I hate to be asking you for money, but... Oh, I should have well, done this when we started. How much you need? But it's uh, hard to tell. Well, here, you you just take it all. There's $300 there. You get what you need, and if that ain't enough, there's more where that come from. Oh, thanks, darling. Where we meet? Uh, how about the mercantile store down on the corner? Oh, that'll be wonderful. Now, you take these packages and put them in the buggy, and uh, I'll meet you in the mercantile in about an hour. Fine. Ace, six, Jack, four. Your highest bet. Cost you $100 to stay, ma'am. I'll see that and raise you $100. i am afraid you don't have quite enough money there, ma'am. But I think the credit of the future Mrs. Cartwright is good enough for us. Thank you. Nice of you to decorate the place, celebrate my return from San Francisco. <laughs> Welcome home, Adam. Good to see you, son. Nice to have you back. I got the message from the telegraph office that we won the case. I didn't think you'd be back so soon, but I'm certainly glad you got here when you did. Well, I had my fill of the big city, Bob. Uh, what do you think of decorations, huh? Well, what's the occasion? Just because we won the case? Yeah, well, that's not exactly it. Is yeah, well, it... if I let little Joe tell you, he'll string out all night. Horse is getting married. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wait till you see her, Adam. She'll fry your eyeballs. Well, listen, she's a real beauty, and I'll tell him all about it. Just get Adam's horse back to the stable and have him water down. Oh, yeah, well, I, come I on just... Now, come on, do as I tell you. Hey, well, hey, tell him about the thing in a restaurant. <laughs> as a matter of fact, I think you know the girl. I do? Mm-hmm. Don't tell me that girl over in Mormon's Cross and finally got to him with those gooseberry pies. <laughs> no, no. No, it, it's Helen Layton. Josh Layton's widow? Yeah. Quite a surprise, huh? More than that. I know how you feel. A little unusual so soon after her husband's death. As a matter of fact, I felt the same way about it until I, until I talked to Helen and she told me the truth about Josh. What'd she tell you? Now, what's the point of talking about it? And they're genuinely in love with each other. Ah, uh, she never loved anything in her life except a deck of cards. What are you talking about? She gambled away every penny Josh Layton had. She dropped $27,000 in one night in a club in Sacramento City, and that's what started him drinking. Well, she told me. Why didn't you tell me this before? Last time I saw Josh, he was dying. Now, what good would it have done to tell you about it? He wasn't even cold in his grave, and she'd found herself another man to buy her expensive jewelry and dresses and pay her gambling debts. Adam, are you positive? I am. I have to tell Hoss. What's this going to do to him? I don't know. Well, at least he won't marry her. Better let me handle this. Hey, Adam, you old hornswoggler. Whoa. Hey. Oh, I'll tell you the good news? Yeah, yeah. Come on over and say hello. Hello. Helen, your beauty always leaves me breathless. Still the same old flatterer. It's 
It's good to see you again, Adam. Were you surprised? Oh, yes, I was surprised. Well, oh, listen, let's get this buggy unloaded. We can visit the rest of our lives. Uh, uh, Hoss, why don't you let Adam put the buggy away there? I'd like to talk to you about something. Sure, Paul. What is it? Oh, Hoss, can't you see your father wants to talk to you alone? Yeah, but right now, Paul? If you don't mind, son. Oh, good for you, Mr. Cartwright. You just keep him busy while I go in and change. What's the matter, Paul? Adam bring home some bad news or something? Well, uh, in a way. What is it? It concerns Helen. Anything that concerns Helen concerns me. I want to hear it. It's not going to be pleasant. What is it? Hoss, you don't know Helen very well. Go and say it, Paul. And then when you're done, I, I want you and Adam and Joe to keep still about Helen. From now on out. All right. This is the news Adam brought back. Helen is... Helen is a gambler, a compulsive gambler. Before Josh died, she gambled away every penny he had. That ain't true. Yes, it is. There's more. Josh Layton was hardly resting in his grave when she began running around with another man to get more money to gamble with. Paul, you said just about enough. I'm not finished. Hoss, you can't... Think of getting married. She'll ruin your life. She's no good. Paul, don't you talk like that. I ain't gonna listen to them lies. Adam was there, Hoss. He saw Josh Layton drink himself to death over her. Where are you going? I'm gonna go in and talk to Helen. I'm gonna tell her what Adam's saying behind her back. Adam is telling the truth. It ain't. It's a lie. It's a dirty lie. And I'm gonna make Adam eat every filthy word. Helen's got an explanation for this, and I'm going to get it. Who is it? It's me, Hoss. Just a minute, darling. Come in. I just couldn't resist putting it on. This is what I wanted to buy when I sent you away. Hoss, you... you don't like it. Yes, I do. It's the prettiest thing I ever saw. Helen, I... I gotta talk to you about something. Oh, darling, it's... it's so wonderful to have someone to talk to. I'm afraid I, I don't feel much like talking right now. Uh, with your arms around me and, and this dress on. It's been so long since I've been happy like this. If you only knew how miserable those last months with Josh were. How he twisted the truth until, until even my closest friends were telling horrible lies about me. Then you came along and... No more yesterdays, only tomorrows. But people will still talk, I suppose. They just have to be cruel and, and twist everything into a black, awful lie. Yeah, I suppose they do. You wouldn't believe them, would you, Hoss? You won't believe what they tell you about me. No. Besides, it, it don't make no difference, even if it were true. Just wouldn't matter. What's done is done. And I don't want you worrying about it no more, do you hear? You're the kindest, most understanding man that ever lived. Oh, us. 
What was it your father wanted to talk to you about? It was nothing. Just forget it. Well, son. I know that you and Adam mean well. I'm sorry I lost my temper. I didn't mean to call Adam a liar. As far as I know, maybe a part of what he says is true. As far as I'm concerned, Helen's and my life started the day we met. I ain't interested in her past. And I don't want to hear no more about it. What's at stake is your brother's happiness. Ah, uh, don't you think I've considered that? Look, I told you what kind of a woman she is. You told me what kind of woman she was. Could be a difference. Maybe Hoss is right. People can change. Pa? Yes, Joe? Uh, Frank's here to see you. Oh, Frank. A little out of your way, aren't you? Mr. Cartwright, Adam. Frank. Now, don't tell me one of my boys has gambled away the Ponderosa. <laughs> Not one of your boys, Ben. Ben? I'm a businessman, same as anyone else. I took that in good faith, figuring you'd honor it. Well, that kind of proves what I said, doesn't it? I wish you hadn't lost that much. The way things are, I can't just forget about $5,000. I'm... I'm sorry it happened, Ben. And, uh... I don't discuss my customers' private affairs. That's why I came out here. Thanks, Frank. Thank you very much. You want to count it? I don't have to count it, Ben. This I.O.U. ought to show us the truth. Not a word of what you've seen here. Either one of you. Shouldn't have torn it up. Well, he was only thinking about horse. Well, that's all any of us are thinking about. We have to do something about this. We'll put a stop to it. Horse will get hurt, but... I'd rather see that than Pa trying to pick up the pieces the rest of his life. Yeah, you're right. Now, what can we do about it? Where are we going? Virginia City. Virginia City? Whatever for? I heard about your little experience at the Sazerac yesterday afternoon. Oh, you, you mean those silly coin machines. Wasn't that awful? No, I mean the IOU for $5,000. The uh, dealer presented it last night for payment. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. Pa paid it off in full. And now you're going to ship me out of the country to protect your little brother, is that it? No, that's not it. Horst doesn't know a thing about it. Then what are you up to? I'm going to take you back to the Sazerac. I'm going to give you a chance to win back that $5,000. You mean you... that you'll stake me? I'll stake you. Adam Cartwright, I like your way of thinking. That's five, ten. All right, do it, the ten. Make your bet. You're a hundred, and a hundred more. King's up. Good enough. Deuces are high, make your bet.
Jack. Deuces are high, make your bet. I'll see you at 100. And 100 more. Pair of aces. Doggone it, Joe. You better have a good reason bringing me all the way in here. Mrs. Layton, it'll cost you a hundred more to see if you can improve them. Cards, Mrs. Layton? I'll stand pat on these. Can they beat a flush, ma'am? she lose, Adam? Well, let's see. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars. Don't worry, Hoss, they're good. I signed for every one of them. I'm sorry. Hoss, we did it for you, Adam! If there's one thing that offends me, it's any display of violence. Oddly enough, I was thinking that very same thing. I wonder if it would be asking too much to, to ask you to take me out of here. Dear lady, nothing would please me more. We uh, might even have dinner together. Dinner? Oh, that would be wonderful. I can't think of anything I'd enjoy more. Well, you think Joe and I enjoyed doing it? There was no other way. Oh, I, I know you meant well. Maybe there was no other way, but... Well, Hoss is the only one who can decide that. Feller's gonna just sit here and mope all day, or you're gonna go out and go to work with me. 